Blistering barnacles. Blistering barnacles. Blistering barnacles. Blistering barnacles. Blistering barnacles. Blistering barnacles. My wife might think I identify with the grumpiness sometimes, but I think. Uh, I've known the, about the character since I was about six years old. I used to run around my garden playing Captain Haddock with my little brother playing Tintin. So I've, uh, I've studied him for a long, long time. So I think I've, I've uh, hopefully sorted him out in my head. I think I enjoy the joy of doing the show. It's such a joyful show. And it, this particular story, uh, which is taken from Tintin in Tibet, is really about uh, friendship more than uh, you know, baddies and goodies. And uh, I think the reaction from the audience is, is terrific at the end. It's, it's just full of joy. It's really, really great, and the children really enjoyed it. It was really, really good. It's one million stars. Something for everyone and a family. It's a fantastic production. It was really cleverly directed. I think there are things that you have to respect. Hergé was an absolutely brilliant artist, the best in his field. Um, but I think we've respected that. The designer and I did an awful lot of work. We spent a lot of time in Brussels. The estate have been, have been, we've worked very closely with them to make sure that we honour that. Um, so I, I think, I think he's really represented. I, I dare to say that if he was around, he'd come and he'd like it. His wife certainly liked it. Children's theatre is sometimes so dumbed down, and it's sometimes so patronising and condescending, or it's you know a, a, a piece of theatre that's transplanted from the television and. You know, this is this has its own theatrical life, its own integrity. We thought it was fantastic. Yeah. Really, really impressed. It was really great. Really good. I thought the abominable snowman was quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's going to appeal to everyone. I know that's a bit of a cliche, but it's definitely not a kids' show. I mean, kids are going to love it, but if people are sort of worried that um, you know it's a show only for kids, then they'll be mistaken. That's the biggest feedback that we get is uh, you know the people are surprised and that it's got you know something in it to appeal to to lots of different people. Got Snowy? Snowy's here. Come on, Snowy. <laughs> Hello. All right, mate. Yeah, no, we could. We, you know, it's a lot of like. Do you understand musicians. what I'm saying? Uh, no, I can't, but I might be able to now, just, just for, in for a short while. Yeah. It's translation, he's got a special chip in his head. Mm. Wait a minute, look at oh this. My God. <laughs> look at this. Oh, Hunter Snow look with his pink coat. <laughs> now, I don't want to cast any aspersions, but the thing is about this dog, is it actually is male, isn't it? Is male. I just always suspected it had a camp tendency, that's what's going on there. Look at that collar. This mm -hmm. is Minty, and uh, Minty plays Snowy at the beginning and the end of the... Of the uh, of the show and I kind of have to follow this so it's a little bit difficult. Snowy is very difficult to deal with yes um, he does have to have his own uh, dressing room his own uh, toilets um, his own chaperone um, and he has his own fan base as well. You, you get snacks and you get looked after all day long and I think she gets paid more than I do <laughs> which is a big big problem. <laughs> glorious evening um, making hundreds of children happy giggle laugh everything and let's hope let's hope this is the beginning of their theatrical uh, life and they'll go to lots more great theatre you've got the Tintin fans who go hmm Tintin oh yeah we're, we're you know we're, we're the protectors of Tintin how they can't do a stage production of it and they're kind of genuinely pleasantly surprised and then you've got people who don't know what to expect and, and I think it's a show that is surprising you don't get what you expect you get so much more <laughs>